Hey, I'm Evan, Head of Engineering for RM Stator. Today we're going to show you our new dual output stator kit um, for the uh, Polaris ATVs. So we originally developed this kit for the Polaris Razor 900 and 1000s, um, but a lot of the ATV models use the exact same stator and flywheel and regulator system. So we have adapted it uh, to fit specifically on the ATVs and it's a really, really nice upgrade. Um, if you have a Sportsman, this right here is a, a Sportsman 570, um, an EFI uh, 2017 model, but if you have a Polaris Sportsman ATV, one of the later models, chances are you've had regulator and or stator failures. Um, this is the ultimate fix uh, for the charging system on these models. Um, and uh, we want to show you how to do it on a, on a Sportsman 570 here. So um, the purpose of this kit is um, we have a new stator um, we call it our dual output stator. There's actually two separate windings on this stator with two separate outputs. Um, the purpose of this is that we can run these two outputs from the stator and split the load across two separate voltage regulators. And here we use our new RM Stator series voltage regulators that are a really, really nice upgrade. Um, their problem with the original charging system on these, um, these uh, Sportsman's and the Razor's was that we had a really powerful stator um, and we were trying to run all of the output of an extremely powerful stator through a voltage regulator that just couldn't handle the load. Um, so the, uh, the upgrade here with this system is splitting our stator output between two separate voltage regulators and we're able to reduce the load by half to each regulator um, and make these extremely reliable. So here's the two voltage regulators we use with this system and I've showed you the dual output stator we use. We also include two wiring harnesses to connect the system. Um, and to adapt it to the ATV models, um, we, we include a very long wiring harness here. And this lets you mount the regulators anywhere you want on the vehicle. It's the same way we do it with our Razor um, applications. Um, now on a lot, of, um, a lot of applications on the ATVs, um, we give you plenty of links so you can mount the regulators on the back of the vehicle or up front or wherever you'd like. Um, you will have extra wire on a lot of ATV applications, especially if you decide to mount the regulators up front. So to make it uh, fit your application even better, we include connector sets uh, for the regulator connection that lets you cut the harness to length uh, depending on where you want to mount the regulators and put new connectors on so you can make it fit exactly how you want. Now you don't have to do any of this, you can just use the long harness the way it is and you can tie up the extra harness or you can cut, use these and cut to length to make a, a nice clean installation if you want to go that route. I definitely recommend our RM Stator uh, crimpers as well if you want to cut the harness to length because this is the exact crimper you need to get really perfect crimps on your connections. So um, you'll see in this video we filmed a really good um, installation video for the Stator and voltage regulator on a stock Sportsman 570. Um, I'm going to use those clips showing you how to remove uh, and change the original Stator which applies here as well. Um, and we already have the kit installed on this uh, ATV, so I'm not doing an actual installation here in this video, but I'm going to show you where we mounted the regulators, so it'll give you a really nice location and an option for where to put them, as well as how we routed the wiring harness uh, and connected the stator plugs and all. So this video is specific on this Sportsman 570, but the same installation steps and the same kind of procedure applies to any of the other Polaris ATVs that this system applies to. So you can check our fitment list and see what other options you have if you have a different model. And we include plenty of harness length and everything you need to install it on any of the applications that we list this for. So keep in mind, while I'm showing you on a 570, this can apply to a lot of different models. Okay, so here we're looking at the side of the motor and uh, to get started, we need to drain the coolant because we need to take off the water pump cover here on the outside. Um, to do this, we just removed ho the hose clamp here on the radiator hose and dumped it here and uh, from the cover and with the bucket underneath. So it's a pretty easy way to drain it. So now I can get that out of the way. Um, I've got eight millimeter bolts all the way around the water pump cover. So I remove the last couple of those and get that out of the way. Okay, so a few other things we need to remove. We're going to have to loosen the brake master cylinder um, so we can get enough clearance to remove the cover. That's 11 millimeter bolts. They're already loose and that gives us some room to pivot this hose out of the way. Um, we also need to remove the crank position sensor, which is a single 8 millimeter bolt. I already have that loose, so I'm going to get that out of the way. 
And then we can see our stator cover here. Um, they're eight millimeter bolts all the way around. Some of them are kind of tight and hard to get to, but use your right combination of sockets and extensions and you can get to all of them from the side here. I'm gonna remove the last two. Okay, now that I have those out of the way, need to make sure I unplug the stator, which is run across the front of the motor here and plugged into the regulator. It's already been unplugged, so we have that loose. Okay, so now we have everything loose and ready to remove the side cover. Now this is a really strong magnet on the flywheel, so it takes a little bit of power to get the cover off. So I'm not gonna show this on video because I gotta wrestle it off the motor. So we're gonna get that removed and then we'll show you on the bench what the uh, side cover looks like with the stator installed. Okay, so here's our side case on the bench and our stator in it. I've already loosened all the bolts, but I'll tell you what they are and show you how to remove it. So we have uh, Allen head bolts that hold the stator in place. They are five millimeters. Um, they do have Loctite on them from the factory, so be real firm pressure, but gentle to crack them loose because you don't want to risk uh, breaking the bolt. Okay, so I've got those loose. I'm going to remove them. And we can see that the stator's loose on its mount now. Then we also have two four millimeter Allen heads that hold our bracket in place. So I'm going to remove those. They have Loctite on them as well, so just be gentle but firm pressure to remove them. And I get the bracket out of the way. And then I want to pull up till the grommet pops loose. And then I can lift the stator right out of the side case. So pretty easy to remove. Now I'm going to drop our new stator in place. Make sure that your wiring harness exits down. You don't want to install it backwards and have the wires rubbing on the flywheel. Go ahead and drop it in place in the center. Going to put my grommet in place. And then I will line up the stator mounting holes. Make sure to use Loctite on them again when you reinstall them. So I'm gonna use some blue Loctite here. Red's fine as well. And use Loctite on your wire clamp when you reinstall that too. So I'm gonna get those all installed and then I'll show you what it looks like uh, together again. All right, here's our new stator installed. I have the three mounting bolts tight with Loctite and I have the wire bracket tight with Loctite. I have the new grommet in place and I've also checked the whole edge of the case to make sure it's clean and spotless and ready to made up to our new uh, gasket on the motor. So now that we have that all done, uh, we're gonna get it lined up back on the motor. One thing I wanna mention is that you can kinda see in here this uh, slotted piece that's on the impeller uh, for the water pump. Now it shouldn't have moved, but if it did, that does have to line up with a slot, um, I believe on the inside of the crankshaft. So, so you wanna make sure that's in the same original position as when you took it out and that the motor didn't turn over. Um, if you need to, you can grab the impeller on the back of, for the water pump and you can rotate it a little bit to get that lined up, but just something to keep an eye on. Okay, so we're ready to put our side case with our new stator back in place. A couple things to look at. Make sure you line up the coolant passage hose here. Um, it's got some rubber gaskets on it or rubber O-rings. Just make sure you get it lined up and pressed in all the way. Um, make sure that your gear here for the uh, starter drive has not slipped. Make sure it's still firmly meshed in the starter itself and in the teeth on the back of the flywheel. Um, it's pretty uh, tight in place so it likely didn't slip, but just make sure everything's lined up correctly. Um, we put, went ahead and put a new gasket in here so these don't uh, it's a rubber gasket, it doesn't require any silicone sealer or anything. Our old one was in great shape as well, it really didn't need to be replaced, but it's uh, cheap insurance while you have it apart. And then, uh, like I mentioned before, make sure that the slot um, from the water pump impeller lines up with the slot here on the crankshaft. We haven't turned anything, so it should line right up. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get the side cover in place, move the master cylinder out of the way. And careful of your fingers because that flywheel magnet is very strong and will kind of pull this guy into place. So you're going to need to kind of wiggle stuff around a little bit until you get it lined up. So I'm close there. I'm gonna go ahead and get it lined up the rest of the way and then get our bolts back in place. Um, they're eight millimeters all the way around. So I'm gonna get this uh, installed, tightened up. I'm gonna go ahead and put the crank sensor back in place and tighten it up. And then I am going to put our water, uh, water pump cover back in place, tighten it up, attach our coolant hose, gonna route our stator wiring harness over to the other side and get ready for the regulator. And I will remount the master cylinder. So I'm gonna get that all buttoned back up and then we'll show you the side of the motor all back together. Okay, so we have our motor back together. Um, 
And uh, we went ahead and uh, filled our coolant back up. And uh, we didn't need to drain the oil in this case, though if you do want to do an oil and filter change, it's a good time to do it. Um, <clears throat> but with the uh, bike up in the air on its side, there's no need to drain the oil. Okay, so here we're showing the front of the vehicle where the original regulator was mounted, and we obviously have our new regulators mounted. On this uh, Sportsman 570, the original regulator was mounted up here to the crossbar. Um, I already have it removed. And you can see that I've drilled a couple holes um, and used some hardware to mount our two new voltage regulators to the crossbar. This is a great location up front because you get a lot of airflow uh, through the front of the vehicle. Um, when you're removing the old regulator, um, as you'll see in the other clip we'll put in here, um, the uh, battery connections are made up at the top here. So uh, we're going to move the camera up top and show you where those connections are. And on a lot of Polaris vehicles, um, including this 570, there is a junction block up front um, where the, uh, the battery connections are made. And you'll see that there's um, the red wires here and the black wires here. This is where the original battery connections from the regulator are made and you can see that our new harness is attached here with uh, two red wires and two black wires for our new voltage regulators. So you can see that I have the harness routed uh, coming up here from the new voltage regulators up front. Okay, here we're showing our harness routed from the front of the vehicle and we have it crossing over here tied up to the frame and Coming right back here to our stator connectors. So you'll see that they're both plugged into our stator wiring harness. And you can see that exiting from the side of the cover right here. So there's not much to plugging in the stator side of things. They're all uh, keyed and they only plug in one way. And it does not matter which goes to which. You can plug either stator output into either um, harness connector. All right, and to talk a little bit more about connecting the harness, um, you can see that the regulator connectors are color-coded and they're keyed, so they can really only be plugged in one way. There's no way to do this wrong. Um, and you can use either harness with either regulator and either stator output. So there's really no need to worry about which way, uh, what part plugs into what. Um, if you do cut your harness to length because you want to make it fit perfectly on your vehicle, just make sure that you take a picture, or you can always look at our pictures online, and you make sure that you know um, which color wire is going into which connector and in which location. So what matters is that the yellow wires are in the gray connector here because they are keyed, so you can't swap these two plugs. Um, and the yellow wires don't have any polarity, so you can put them back in the connector in any order. Um, on the black connector that is the battery side, you do have to put them in the correct location. So make sure you pay close attention to which location the red wire is in and the black wire is in. Then on the other side of the harness, there's no need to cut this side to length, but you'll see that you have the stator connector, which is keyed and uh, can only be plugged in one way, so there's nothing to worry about there. And then you'll see that you have your battery connections. This is the red and the black wire with ring terminals. So on some models, this will go directly to your battery terminals, or you can always do that really on any model. Um, some models of, the, uh, of Polaris uh, ATVs and the Razors uh, will run this connection directly, uh, or sorry, to a junction block like we showed on this vehicle. So either way is fine, just depending on which way the vehicle was set up. Um, when you route your harness uh, the way that you would like, you will have to cut the tape here on the harness and remove the battery wires from the harness so you can route them separately um, to fit nicely where you want them to go. Hey, make sure to like our videos and subscribe to the RM Stator YouTube channel. Uh, we want to keep doing new installation videos. Uh, leave us comments and let us know what parts uh, you'd like a video for. Uh, let us know if you have any suggestions uh, or questions. We're happy to help out. And always check out rmstator.com for our latest products and information.